We're here at the Burlington, Vermont Farmer's Market in the center of downtown Burlington, Vermont. It's, it looks like a terrible time for everybody yeah. involved. I, nobody's enjoying themselves. Nothing green here, there's nothing organic or local. It's all really kind of just a bunch of useless crap. So just skip it. He's lying. Don't bother. He's absolutely lying in every way. It's like the rest of Vermont, quite honestly. Really not sustainable or He's lying. Uh, environmental in any way. There are no, no Subarus. Also, there are no Subarus on the street. Yeah. Really? Nobody drove the Subaru here? I don't think anybody, I haven't seen a single Subaru since I got here. It's all Hummers, no Subarus. Vermont, just stay away. Don't bother. The thing not to miss in Vermont is the sort of seeds of what the next economy on this planet might look like. Vermonters, I think, to a person, are here for a specific reason and often very connected to the landscape. Yes Tomorrow Design Build School in Warren, Vermont. It's called Yes Tomorrow because it's a blending of yesterday's craft and durability and tomorrow's technologies. The Institute, because it was conceived by Dana, was as a think-do tank. We have no net CO2 emissions. And since this plant has been built, we've put more than $200 million right back into the local Vermont economy. We're looking at taking wind power, making hydrogen, and finding renewable sources that can power motor vehicles. The Intervale Center's mission is to develop land-based enterprises and programs that generate social and economic opportunity and also protect natural resources. The Green Party is the fastest growing political party here in the United States. I love Burlington. I don't drive. High five for no car. No car. <laughs> Government can help to establish values that include solutions for all of us. And at the state level, there's a development law, Act 250, that really was aimed at protecting the environment as the state developed. Having those discussions 25 years ago will help set the stage so that um, the environment was important. All of us have to begin to bring those issues up. If your government's not doing something about it, now's the time. Burlington and Vermont, because of its size, it definitely lets people work together. And you know, the benefits are all cumulative benefits. And I think that's how we kind of do things, is that uh, we definitely work together. A land trust is a nonprofit organization that uses a variety of tools to protect land. We actually do purchase farms, protect them, and then because the value of developing the property has been stripped away, we're able then to sell at a very low cost to farmers who are looking to get access to affordable farmland. Vermonters have taken it into their own hands to use private initiative, volunteerism, and grassroots organizing to also do land conservation work. It really does empower local citizens to decide on the destiny of, of their land. We work with the land trusts all the time. Um, in fact, we do projects for them. This room is where most of the creativity in the school occurs. Our bread and butter courses here are two-week design build courses. People come here for two weeks, they live on campus for the most part, and they immerse themselves in the design process and also the building process. And then you're in an environment like this where we're trying to walk the, the talk. It influences the type of designs that come out of people that come here, and it's really a joy to watch. We're writing a book based upon this experience, and the book started out like, here's how you build a Cobb wall, and it's ending up now that we're talking more about how you build a community. Cobb Hill housing and sustainability institute. This is an experiment in sustainable living which combines a farm, a community, and a research institute all co-located. There's a lot of like hard science that needs to be done but ultimately if you can't bring it to a ground level where it can be made to work, mm -hmm. what good is it? If you get down to it, I think people look around and say, you know, things aren't right and it bugs me and when people tap into that they become authorities because, you know, <laughs> I am my own authority about the things around me. I think the lights would have to go out before Vermonters would agree to a coal-fired plant in their state. Why not wood? It's our only indigenous fuel. And basically all of the costs go right into the local economy. The idea of burning wood to make steam has been around for 100 years in the pulp and paper industry. We took that technology and merged it with power generation technology. While the trees were growing, which were our fuel, they were absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, turning it into carbon in the fiber, so you have no net increases, but you've generated a whole lot of electricity. Burlington Electric isn't supposed to make money. Their main purpose is to supply power reliably to the people of Burlington at the lowest cost possible, and also make it sustainable and environmentally friendly. There's like a whole spectrum of stuff that 
we've been successful at in terms of energy use. I think we've begun to work harder on trying to figure out solutions to transportation, and that's a, that's a harder challenge. We're experimenting with a hydrogen-fueled car. We have a wind turbine in the city on site where we make hydrogen and compress the hydrogen and store it and then uh, have a fueling dispenser. And we make enough hydrogen there that could power a fleet of five of these Priuses. This is zero emissions. Water vapor is the only thing we're spewing so we could drink it. We could drink it. Mm. That's delicious. Get up to the Intervale Farms in Burlington. There's a terrific program that's called the Intervale Center. The Vermont Land Trust was one of the parties that worked with us in terms of the Intervale land sale. We have an agreement with the Intervale Foundation. It's a good example of the kind of scale on which we need to be working. Right now we have 14 farms here at the Intervale, half a million pounds of food every year. All of them are practicing organic methods. The average age of a farmer in Vermont is 53. So we have to start training and helping get new farmers into this industry. We started an incubator farming program where folks can come down and lease a smaller parcel of land. They can have access essentially to this platform of services. And in our social program is our Healthy City Youth Farm. 25 at-risk teens are hired, trained and employed to run an organic vegetable farm from seed to market. So they got these teens growing the food that's ending up in their own cafeterias, which is like, oh. the largest hospital in Vermont is buying fresh produce from this youth farm, which is like, yeah, clouds parting, you know. The steam coming up over there is the waste steam from the wood-fired McNeil plant. The design for the Food Enterprise Center is an eco-industrial design in that it would capture the waste steam and have it heat the greenhouses and part of the facility. The Vermont Land Trust is a terrific organization. 232 acres of land here in the Intervale just in this past June was put under easement with the Vermont Land Trust. This mayor of Burlington this year said, we are going to preserve the Intervale for agricultural purposes in perpetuity. Now there's a leader. Come to Burlington, Vermont next year for the Naked Bike Ride in June. That's where everybody gets on their bicycles naked or with body paint and rides through the streets to bring attention to global warming. <laughs> the Naked Bike Ride brings a lot more attention to this issue than any other tactic. You don't have to wear body paint and the majority of people don't. Just make sure you bring a camera. Last year, the Naked Bike Ride was freezing. Not to the benefit of a lot of people, because it shrinks up body parts. Burlington, Vermont, proportionally speaking, leads the world as far as naked bike riders. Pressure's on, Ben. <laughs> Let this <just> roll. <laughs> yeah. You can wear, like, underwear. The women can wear bras and panties. But as long as you're in the ballpark of being naked, please come and, and ride. You don't want to miss this.